Hey y'all, it is Annalise, and in this video, I wanted to talk to you about my new MacBook Pro! Ah! So if you've seen some of my recent videos, you would know that I got a brand new MacBook Pro. It is the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro Retina Display with Touch Bar, and I'll get into the tech specs in a minute, but I got this bad boy about three months ago now, and I am in love. I love this computer, and I'm so happy I have it, but like I said, if you watch my video, you would know that I used to have a, well, I still have, it's right here. I have a mid-2014 MacBook Pro Retina Display. I I love this computer and it's done me well for the past couple of years, but there's one big reason why I had to get a new one and it's quite an eyesore. Also, it makes it almost impossible to use this computer. So this has just gone progressively worse, which is super fun. As a early graduation gift to myself, because I did get it before I graduated, my mom suggested that I should just get a new computer instead of spending the money on replacing the screen, and I did. And I've had it for three months now, and I thought it was time that I did a video talking about kind of what I love about it and sort of my review on the 2018 MacBook Pro. So I feel like an important place to start is what the difference between this computer and my old computer are, so that way you can kind of have a basis of why things might be better. I still love this computer. It was a great computer for me for the past almost four years. And yeah, I was having some issues and I was actually having a really big battery issue that I was kind of like putting off and ignoring. And you know, the speed wasn't like it had used to be. And I had started doing more advanced stuff with my videos and with graphic design and with photo editing, but I kind of was like, you know what, this is still a great computer, and it was, and honestly, if the screen would not have gotten completely destroyed by my charger, I would still be using it to this day. I wasn't planning on buying a new computer because it was doing me just fine. I was gonna replace the battery and keep it for as long as it would go. But then a nearly thousand dollar screen replacement came in the way, and I felt like it would be wiser to invest that money into a brand new computer that is newer and that has higher capabilities for the future of what I like to create. Now, to give you kind of an insight on what that computer is and what this one is, I have the tech specs written down here on my iPad. So my old computer was a 2.8 i7 quad core processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a two gigabyte Nvidia graphics card. This new beefy boy is a 2.9 six core eighth generation i9 has a Radon Pro Vega 24 gigabytes of dedicated graphics as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of solid state storage. And this one had one terabyte. And oh boy, I think that was was the thing I was the most excited for when it came to getting a new computer is, okay, yeah, I'll get a faster computer and whatever, but I get more storage. And I I think I had maybe 20 gigabytes available on here at like all times because I was constantly scrambling because I'd edit a video and then I'd get it off of there. And then I just had so many photos. Like you should not have 30,000 photos in the photos app on your computer. And I know that very well. However, I continue to do it because I'm dumb, I guess. I don't know. So now I have two terabytes on this guy and ooh, is it nice, especially with editing on my video. I don't have to worry about constantly exporting stuff to a hard drive, which I still do. Don't worry, I'm not gonna repeat old habits, but then on an even bigger scale, but it's nicer to have that wiggle room. So now you know that I have an upgraded computer. There's more cores, there's more processing power, there's a different dedicated graphics card. Obviously, there's also different generations and stuff. So a four-year-old 16 gigabytes of RAM is probably gonna act a little bit different than a new 16 gigabytes of RAM, so that also comes into play as well. And what I do on my computer, just to give you a little insight, is of course I edit my YouTube videos for my YouTube channel, I edit photos, and then I do a little bit of graphic design. The programs that I mainly use are Final Cut Pro 10 Pixelmator, which I like to call the poor man's Photoshop. You can get it for 30 bucks in the App Store. And then I use photos, and then I've been dabbling slightly in Lightroom, but I don't know how I feel about it yet, so mainly still in the Photos app. And then all the other basic stuff. Oh, and I record my podcast on GarageBand, but I don't do any audio editing. Like I said, I've had this computer for about four months now. I got it in the Almost four months now. And I have absolutely fallen in love with it. Besides the fact that there are so many perks to having a new computer with higher processing power and just like a, a beefier boy, if you will, there's also a lot of other perks to this particular model. So I know that they just recently refreshed this computer. And at first when I heard that, I was like, are you kidding me? Of course, the first time I buy like a replacement computer, they update it like, ah, but then I looked at the tech specs and they're pretty similar.
similar. It's like different processing numbers, but like a different amount of cores and it kind of evens itself out. So I'm okay, I'm happy with it all. But there are other things besides just the tech of it. There's, well, it's still tech because it's a technology. You get what I'm saying. The main thing is like just right here is it is so much thinner, it is so much lighter. My old computer was four and a half pounds and this clocks in at just about four pounds. You wouldn't think that the half a pound would make such a huge difference, but already taking this around with me in my last quarter of undergrad, because yes, I just graduated college. I will talk about that for as long as I can because it's a huge feat. But anyway, while I was in my last quarter where I was in 32 years, Units, I was lugging this boy around a lot and it was delightful to not have a huge heavy computer in my bag It's also thinner if we take a look at the side-by-side -side look of them Oh gosh, Man, it's heavy carrying around two computers, but you can see that there is a clear difference in size I've got about like one finger there. That's how much it looks So it just I don't know if that's really reading well on camera, but oh here we'll put them on top of each other I'm gonna this is how I'm gonna break my new one is by balancing computers on top of each other See that kind of like do you get what I'm saying? This is very difficult. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put her down This computer is indeed thinner. It also has a lot of different on the side. Well, I take the back. There are only one, two types of ports on this computer, and there are a lot of types of ports on this one. So you've got HDMI, MagSafe, which is the charger, USB 3, mini display port, and audio jack. On here, we've got USB type C on both sides, and then we've got an audio jack, and that's it. And it actually is something that I thought might be annoying, but it's really not. I've got a really cool adapter that lets me have the access of all these ports, like HDMI and USB and SD card reader. That's another thing that's on here that I thought I was going to miss, but my adapters come in pretty handy. But the adapters actually aren't that bad, especially if you get a multi-port adapter. If you're using singular adapters for everything, then yeah, that process is going to get pretty annoying. But just having one adapter that you can kind of use as a hub and plug everything into has been pretty simple for me. They're also relatively small, so I'm able to just throw them in my bag whenever I have my computer. Also, my charger is a lot smaller than my old charger, and I can kind of take it apart because it's a USB-C cable and then the brick versus on the old one that was like half having to be wound up all together. So it's easier to travel with. Just everything about this is easier to travel with, which is absolutely great. But then another thing we've got going on here, besides just like the physical aspect of, oh my God, look how beautiful she is. Also, I made this background to match my case. Oh, hello. The sad thing that we miss is no light up Apple logo. It's actually just the silver Apple logo on the back, but I did put my logo on here. So now I've got like my representation on my computer. Everybody knows it's an Apple computer. Cause if you know me, you know it's gonna be an Apple something or another. But then on here, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff going on, like sp specifically like right in this region. So first of all, we've got a bigger trackpad cause like look at how big that is. Like that's a lot of real estate space. Another thing that's really cool is this type of keyboard. Now this keyboard mechanism is called a butterfly mechanism. So pretty much like the traditional like keyboards when you would press down on a key, it would kind of like collapse like an accordion, but now it kind of looks like this. To save you the poor and might I add incorrect explanation I provided here, here's a photo better showcasing the visual difference between the new and the old mechanisms. The butterfly mechanism was supposed to be more reliable to aid in more accurate typing and keyboard responsiveness. While looking up a photo showing the butterfly mechanism, I stumbled upon some articles talking about how people I guess were really not happy with the butterfly mechanism. It reportedly caused problems and rumor has it that Apple is going to go back to something closer to the previous design but better? I don't know about all that, but regardless, I've been enjoying it. So it's supposed to be a more effective way of typing, and I've personally found that I like the butterfly mechanism a lot better. It's less like, like clicky. I don't know if you can hear that. And then, ugh. Can you hear the difference? It's just a, like a little bit different. Also, I like to get my nails done sometimes. I like fancy, you know, acrylic fake nails. And what's nice about the butterfly mechanism is they're actually, the keys are now closer to the housing of the computer. So my fake nails aren't gonna pop off keys. I have never done that with this old computer and knock on wood, it never happened. But it was something that sometimes I would be like nervous that I almost did it. And I have not had that at all with this computer, which has been very nice. And then of course, the star of the show is the touch bar. You can barely 
probably see the touch bar up here, but we'll throw in some juicy B-roll. Anyway, the touch bar is like fantastic and I did not think I would like it as much as I do. Originally, I was annoyed that the utility keys that are above your number keys on a regular keyboard are now in the touch bar and I was like, ugh, this is annoying. I just wanna turn up the brightness real quick. And I thought it was gonna be so many extra steps to do it with the touch bar, but it's really not. And it kind of comes second nature and like the sliding of the volume or the brightness is actually kind of like nifty. I don't know, I like it a lot. And another thing that's just fantastic is how the touch bar changes with applications that you go into. So when I first saw the touch bar on the very first Mac that it came out on, which I don't even know how long ago that was, I kind of saw it as a little gimmicky or maybe something that would not work as well for me. And what I've learned is that it depends on what program I'm using. Because if I'm using the touch bar in Final Cut Pro, I know keyboard commands like the back of my hand. So it's actually quicker to just type the keyboard command versus going up to the touch bar and touching a tool or whatever. But what's really nice about the touch bar is that if you're somebody who's new to a program or you don't know keyboard commands or anything like that, the button is just right there in easy access for you, which is super awesome. There are different tools within like photos that you can scroll between your photo library. You can change tools like brightness and whatever. And those are all nifty, but they're once again, something that I have found that I don't like using. However, what I love the touch bar for is if I'm going through like an autofill or, or something where I'm having to fill out a form, what's really cool is my autofill options pop up as the first option on a keyboard. So like if it has my name, my address, my phone number, and I click on first name, Annalise is gonna show up on my touch bar and I can just tap that. And I've got eight letters in my first name and tapping something that says my name instead of tapping eight letters goes a lot faster and I've really fallen in love with that recently. <laughs> Another thing I really like the touch bar for is if you have a window that pops up and you have to say like, okay, or yes or no, those options are on the touch bar as well as if you're getting a FaceTime call, you can accept that from the touch bar. There's a lot of different things you can do. Also emojis are a great resource to be able to scroll through your emojis on the touch bar. I like it for the simpler things, which is kind of funny because I feel like touch bar was invented for maybe more complex stuff, but the basic stuff is what I really love. And then the other thing that honestly is just a dream because I love Touch ID. I've said this since Touch ID came out and even though Face ID, don't get me wrong, Face ID, she's great, but I'm a Touch ID girl and there's a freaking Touch ID right here on my keyboard to unlock my computer, to do Apple Pay, to do passwords. Are you kidding me? That's fantastic. And I, I, I just love that. How can you not love ease of access of security? We love being secure. There's the secure enclave in here and all that boring tech mumbo jumbo. But we love Touch ID in this household and I'm so happy I have it on my computer. Now, besides all the cool stuff with the keyboard, like I mentioned, it does have only two different types of ports, USB-C Thunderbolt and the aux cord headphone jack. It's a headphone jack. With the charging, I also thought that was gonna be a little bit more difficult. I loved MagSafe because there is the trip safety-ness, which, you know, I don't even know if that's technically why it was created, but I'm assuming so, because that makes the most sense, but how it would just magnetically attached, and then if you accidentally pulled on the cable, the whole computer didn't come down with it. That is one thing that I definitely miss, and I've seen on Amazon that there's like little adapters that you can buy for your charger, so it keeps a little magnet boy in there, and then you can magnetize it, so you don't have to worry about that. However, I haven't run into that too often, as well as something that I think is cool is that you can charge at any of these ports. Also with the 15 inch, having four of those ports is nice because you don't have to worry about ever really running out, especially if you have a multi-port adapter. I know that on the MacBook Air or the new MacBook or like the MacBook 13 inch, MacBook Pro 13 inch, that only has two ports and I'm definitely grateful for the four. When it comes to my new computer, it is just whizzing by any old speeds I had on my old computer. There is much faster rendering time, processing time, like when I'm doing my graphic design or when I'm doing photo editing. I used to also get it crashing a lot within photos when I did photo editing and that does not happen at all on my new computer which is fantastic. It would also take so long to just do things like blemish reduction and my new computer has had no issues with any of that stuff. Especially rendering in Final Cut Pro. I can be working on a project and it take a pause, maybe take a sip of a drink and then whatever I was just working on had finished rendering by the time I go back to my computer which is like less than 10 seconds. So it's been great. I did not do any benchmarks on that but if it's something that you would like to see when it comes 
comes to a video edit on an old computer versus the new computer, I would love to do that for you, but I just never have done one of those before, so maybe I'll try it. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you wanna see, like a benchmark tests and times and all that stuff. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much it for my review of this computer. If you have not caught on by now, I love my new computer, and to say I'm happy my old computer got busted would be incorrect, because like I said, I love Tallulah. This is Tallulah, by the way, but she was getting slow, she was having battery issues, and then obviously the screen just, I closed the charger on the screen. That was 100% my fault. And now I'm very, very hyper paranoid. Anytime there are cables near my computer, I had a tragic experience happen to me and I will not let it affect any of my future children, including Pearl. Yes, that is my computer's name. I named my computer Pearl. I loved the name Tallulah. I love that name. But when I was thinking of a computer for my new name, let's try that again. When I was thinking of a name for my new computer, and yes, I am that person who names her technology. My camera I'm recording on, his name is Hades, and this is Pearl, and I absolutely love her. Pearl is what my middle name means in English, which is something that I kind of just thought of, and then I was like, wow, I think that fits really well, and it did, and and now now we have Pearl. We, we still love you. Anyway, one day I'll get the screen fixed, but that day is not anytime soon, because like I said, almost a thousand dollars to get that screen fixed. Yikes on bikes. If you are somebody who is looking to get a new computer, and you are considering perhaps the MacBook Pro 2018, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Like I said, they just recently did a refresh, so it's now the 2019 MacBook Pro, and there are a few differences, but they seem pretty similar, or at least they stack up to each other pretty well, even though they're different technical specifications. I think they're kind of on the same playing field, but I'm no genius. <laughs> well, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight on this computer, if it might be right for you, or maybe you wanted to know what my thoughts were transitioning from a mid-2014 computer to a 2018 computer, and boy, it has been a journey. But if you have any questions that I did not answer in this video, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. I do have a Patreon and a podcast, so if you want to check those out, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And subscribe to my channel if you're new. And otherwise, I think that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay beautiful, have a marvelous day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!